Have you ever pondered over the power of surrounding yourself with ambitious, driven, talented, and like-minded individuals? Imagine the energy, the momentum, the incredible synergy that could supercharge your growth. Now, think about the possibilities that could unlock for you in such an environment and the significant leaps it could catalyze into your growth trajectory. Just a short while ago, I had the privilege of turning this imagination into reality. I hosted my first ever lecture retreat and business mastermind in Cancun, where I brought together a diverse and powerhouse group of exceptional career coaches. I just share with you a highlight reel from this event to give you a taste of the ambiance, the energy, and witness the immersive experiences and powerful conversations we had, the stunning surroundings we enjoyed, and the real-time growth that occurred. Hello and welcome to the Dare to Differentiate show, where we're all about owning your voice, value, and visibility with confidence. Comment to let us know where you're tuning in from. I'm your host, Diana YK Chan, LinkedIn top voice of 2022, LinkedIn learning instructor and founder of My Markability. Whether you're tuning in live or watching the replay, I am so delighted that you're here. If we're not connected yet, make sure to follow me on my LinkedIn, Instagram, and my YouTube channel. All right, so today's topic is on how to quantum leap your growth, and I am so excited to guide you through this journey of rapid transformation and breakthroughs. In the next hour, we will uncover strategies, share powerful insights, and peek into the minds of some of the most incredible career coaches who recently joined me for a transformative experience at the Luxury Retreat and Business Mind Mastermind in Cancun. We'll dive deeper into the personal journeys, the quantum leaps in their careers, and the incredible benefits of surrounding yourself with high caliber individuals. We'll also discuss the profound impact of personal development and the magic of stepping beyond your comfort zone. So type in a plus one if you're excited. Type in the plus one. All right, let me see who's in the house here. All right, we have Miami, Ghana, Boston. Hey, Dan, great seeing you. South Carolina. All right, Johan, go Diana. Thank you. Layla, Iran, amazing, amazing. Okay, so a few reminders is that replay will be available. You can check out my YouTube channel afterwards where we'll be adding timestamps for easy viewing. You can also wanna encourage you to click like and comment anytime to support us, share your thoughts, key learnings and questions, engage with one another. I'm seeing a lot of chats here is going amazing, amazing, okay? I want you to show your appreciation support to our guest speakers who are coming on the show soon there. Type in hashtag go coaches, okay? So before I bring the coaches on the show, I want to share one more video uh, from our closing night where we did a very powerful exercise on the possibilities I see in you to give you an idea of how magical and transformational the event was. So I want to give you that. So sit back, soak in the experience and prepare for a dose of inspiration. Okay, let's get ready to quantum leap your growth. And then we're going to bring the coaches on shortly here. Wasn't that magical? So that'll just give you a taste of what the experience is like. So let's start bringing our amazing coaches to the show here. <laughs> Super excited. Welcome, welcome. Oh my goodness. Let's see, we have six other coaches. Yeah, six coaches in total coming to join me here today. Oh my goodness. Hi, Sweta. Hi, Anna. Hi, Maya, Jasmine, Katie, and Tiffany. Woohoo! <laughs> Welcome, welcome. Oh my goodness, what a powerhouse group. Like this, 
was the group that was part of the luxury retreat and business mastermind. So I am so excited to have you all back again. This is our mini reunion here. So thank you so much for being here today. Why don't we just kick off first, just so for our audience here to just to get a little bit know, know more about you is like my first question is, um, what do you love about what you do? Who do you start with? Jasmine, why don't we kick off with Jasmine here? <laughs> Oh, man, what do I love about what I do? You know, I've been um, since coming back from the mastermind, I've been reflecting on so much because I just feel like during the mastermind, so much came from came up for me from a business perspective, but also from a personal perspective. And truly what I love about what I do is that my clients challenge me to heal. So working with them challenges me to look at myself in different ways and to truly take myself through transformative processes to continue my own healing and growth. And so when I tell my clients, you know, you are the reason why I do this for myself too. I truly mean that. I don't think that I would have gone through the healing journey that I have gone through and really changed so many aspects of my life had it not been for becoming a coach. Wow, so powerful. Love it, love it. Sweta. You know, the impact and I think the transformations that um, you see it with your client, um, it just calls for a celebration pretty much every day. You're the first one cheerleading for them. And I think I, I, was, I was once in their boat, but I had no support. Now I teach them my lived and tested experience and you feel that I wish someone was there hand-holding. And I think... That's what I love about this whole thing, coaching industry and being a career strategist. It's just to handhold them from ground zero when they have zero confidence. And when you're done with them, uh, celebrating with like, oh, my God, look at you. Where were you and where you are? And I think that's the most uh, impactful experience for me that I never felt it uh, working for somebody else in corporate world. Oh, that's so amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Who's next here? I'll go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, just layering on what uh, Jasmine and Sweater were saying. Uh, I, I love the fact that you know we are able to witness like firsthand people stepping into the best version of themselves. You know, for me, being able to be a catalyst for this type of impact and confidence and career progression, and really be the coach for them that I wish I had had in my own career. You know, to pave the way fill in the gaps, remove the guesswork, and help them celebrate themselves, the big wins, the small wins, and all of the progress in between. We don't do that enough. And I, I feel really lucky that I get to do this kind of work where I'm literally constantly inspired by my community, by my clients, by amazing fellow coaches like all of us here. Um, there's no shortage, shortage of, of inspiration. And I think it's why it's been like the most rewarding work of my life. So yeah, definitely oh. a big reason of why I love what I do. That's amazing. Celebrate, right? I love that. All right. Katie, what about you? Yeah, so I mean, very similar to the other women. I think that having an impact on someone's life and career is just so rewarding. And part of my mission is to help close the gender gap in leadership. And so for me, the type of coaching I do, I love being able to impact that even in my small way, right? Every woman that I help get promoted to the executive level is like, selfishly, I love it. I love it for them, but I love it for me too. And I love it for all the women out there. So it just, it makes every day worthwhile. I love it. Impact, impact. What about you, Anna? Well, it's, it's uh, similar for me as well in terms of impact. And my focus is helping professionals discover and lend their dream jobs. And what comes often with that is how the quality of their lives changes because now they feel so much more fulfilled and happier and challenged if that's what they were looking for. And they're making more money and they have more free time and they have more energy in the evening to spend with their loved ones and with their family. So it's not just about the career for me and for, for people that I work with. It's about the quality of their life. And also for me, it's seeing that 
you know, I've worked with people from over 30 countries and how global that is and how the challenges are very similar all across the world, but then helping people get kind of on the other side and showing them what's possible for them. And seeing that, <laughs> Tiffany, you said that, you know, celebrating them and, and I, I feel the same way. I feel like what I've seen my clients achieved is so much more than I ever have. And they show me every day that nothing is impossible. I say that every day, nothing is impossible because you guys show me that that is true. Oh, what's possible? Love it. And Maya? Yeah, I mean, obviously I echo everything that has been said here. I think all of us chose to serve this way because we want to make an impact, because we want to make a difference. And I think for many of us, it's because we never had that support. So our journey was a little bit more challenging and difficult. And, and now we want to give back. Um, so I would say for me, it's just knowing that what we're doing, what we're working on goes beyond just finding the next job or getting a promotion. I think we all teach people how to think differently. We work a lot on mindset and how to really change what you believe so that you can empower yourself moving forward, make better decisions, and just build a career and life that you love, which is something that we all deserve because we spend so much time, about 90,000 hours working, and we deserve to enjoy this time. So knowing that I can make that little difference in someone's lives, um, it makes all it just makes everything worthwhile. Oh, I love this. It, this, for those who are here, first of all, welcome. Welcome to the show on how to quantum leap your growth. This is a group of amazing career coaches who all joined me for the recent lecture retreat and business mastermind. And we're going to dive in now to talk more about the experience um, that we had. And I'm going to kick things off. I have to tell you, first of all, I'm in awe seeing all of you here right now. Like literally it was just 10 days ago, less than 10 days, a week ago, we were just together in Cancun for like five transformational days. And it was just so powerful, like seeing all the transformation in all of you. And I really want to share with our audience here, because I know a lot of people are curious, like, what was it like? I really want to kick things off in terms of questions of what was that experience like? I'm going to put up the question here is what was memorable or transformative experience from this event that has had a lasting impact on you and, and why? <laughs> Oh my gosh, where do we start? <laughs> oh my God, my tissue here. How, how much time do I we know. have? <laughs> I need tissue. I need tissue. Watching that camera was like going back and tearing up now. See if, if I cry, you know, it's don't don't hold me accountable for it. You know, we, we are telling women should not be emotional, but I think I'm gonna be emotional today and probably I'm tearing up already if you can't see, and I don't know if you're feeling it too. And I'll go first. Transformation for me was I think um Looking at each of you, I would see I'm tearing up. <laughs> it just feels like it's possible as a woman that we can, we can collaborate, not compete, right? Because we've been taught all our, all, our, all our life, like, you know, um, when it comes to women, we just sometimes drag each other down. But I think I felt... It was not the competition. It was a transparency and sharing everything, the knowledge and everything. See, I'm like tearing up. But again, you know what? I'll go for it. But then that's what I that's what I felt. I have somebody here now. I don't feel lonely. I don't know if you all felt the same way, but I felt as a coach, as an entrepreneur, it was so serial. It's like I can ask you and then I know you have an answer and I can be vulnerable with you just like that. And how many of us actually went through that vulnerability in the sessions, right? And I, it was so authentic. Amazing. Yeah, I, I just, I'm, I'm going to try to not get teary too. Um, but I do want to, I want to pull it into community and the power of community. I think the thing that was most powerful for me is that um, sometimes I can't see the things that other people can see in me. And I think that's the biggest, most beautiful power of community and of this retreat where the exercises where everyone else got a chance to tell me what they see in me. And it boosted my confidence in a way that when I came back, I asked myself, why am I holding myself back? 
if these amazing women who know me in the LinkedIn sphere, but don't know me from a personal space, my background, you know, where I came from can see all of these powerful things in me. Why am I not seeing them in myself? And I think that's the power of community. And when we think about building our communities, whether it be professional community or personal community, that is one of the key reasons why we all push community building and networking on our clients is sometimes it's just awesome to have someone tell you that you're the bomb especially in those moments where maybe you don't necessarily see it. And so the biggest impact for me was coming back with this newfound confidence, not just within my business, but also within my personal life. I came back feeling like, you know what? That dude that didn't text me, like, F him. I'm the shit. <laughs> I love it. Love it, love it. I love that. that. That's amazing to hear. And by the way, for those who are tuning in, this was our first time all gathered together in Cancun for the very first time. We all met on LinkedIn and this was our very first time. And it just like, we became like fast friends, like lifelong friends now. So amazing, amazing. <laughs> all right. Who's next here? <laughs> um, okay. So I'm next. In terms of what was transformative, there was so much. There was so much. I think I, I told you guys this like a hundred times. Um, one of the big things for me, and this kind of echoes what Sweta said, but just the possibilities that are there for all of us. And I think we, a lot of us hold ourselves back unintentionally or when we think we're dreaming big about our life or our career, it's, it's through like a lens of limitation. And so this really allowed me to see what was possible for my business, for my life. And, and that was like, that has had a lasting impact. I, I've been like up here since I got home, just like furiously like working away because I've just been so inspired and it's really opened up like what's possible, the impact that I can have. Um, and then of course, like, of course the community so this is something I'm, I'm already passionate about. I try to create peer groups in the world. I was in a, in a sales leader peer group back when I was an executive, and I really saw the value of this. And it's something that as an entrepreneur now, I've been searching for a little bit. Like, where is my new peer group? Where is my community? And I came into this. I, I didn't know what to expect. And I was like, yes, like, this is it. Right. Like just just a group of people where we can we can be vulnerable. I'm going to get emotional. We can be vulnerable. We can lift each other up. We can respectfully challenge each other if that's what we need. Yeah. Right. It's just like it's 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 game changing. I think it's game changing personally and professionally. Yeah. All yeah. Right. I love got to go away from you. Now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cue, cue me in. Cue me in. All right. Um, oh, I love this. I know that it, it was such a transformative experience, Diana, on like so many levels. And after I shared my response, I, I'd love maybe after this part, Diana, if you could even share with everyone like a little bit more about your vision and planning process, because you put so much into this. Um, you, you know, handcrafted this experience from A to Z. And I think it'll be really interesting for people to hear like how it originated and, and how it came to this yeah. beautiful fruition. Uh, but coming back to your, your main question around transformation. So there were a few things that came to mind for me. You know, we started really on day one talking about owning our story. And I think for me, layering that piece in with the community that you brought together here was the perfect match in heaven because not only were we able to really double down on who we are, where we came from and how that can further catapult our businesses, but it gave me such a greater appreciation for everyone that joined this mastermind and really understanding the strength, the resilience, the passion, the dedication that we each bring to why we do what we do today. And that's not always the stuff that we see on social media or, you know, in our content, but it allowed us to really peel back the layers of the onion through our conversations, through the meals, through the, the mastermind sessions, everything. And that was probably one of the biggest transformational moments for me because it was very validating. It was very validating that this is what I meant to do, that there's still so much more to come, even what 
Katie was saying around what's possible. I left feeling energized and excited and thinking of things that maybe were like five years down the line for me, but I'm like, heck yeah. So why don't I just start doing that sooner? Um, so that was really amazing. And I'd say the other big thing, Diana, that, that came to mind a lot was, you know, I absolutely value community. I see so much wealth and wisdom that comes from being a part of something like this. And I've been part of communities uh, up to now in, in my business, but I'd say what's really magical here is the fact that we are fellow career coaches. We're in the same industry, but are really embracing the spirit of collaboration. So that the level of relevancy in what we shared and how applicable it is, is probably one of the best transformative experiences I've had because I can really take it and run with it and not feel, okay, but how does that really apply to me? Or how can I tweak that for myself? It's like, no, this is really an immersive experience where we got to share that in space with each other. So I'm, I'm extremely grateful that I had a chance to be a part of it. Oh, love that. Thank you. Thank you. I'll definitely answer that question once I'll give uh, Anna my, uh, that's a fantastic question. Thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll go next. Uh, so it's funny when I when I came back, someone asked me, "Well, how was how was your conference in Mexico?" I'm like, oh, you have <laughs> this. This was this has nothing to do with a conference. This is that's what everyone says, order. right? <laughs> I'm like, I can't even I can't even begin to explain the difference from where where I was and what the experience was like and how that compares to a conference. You cannot even put them on the same on the same level. So for me. <laughs> I think, you know, it's also the community piece, but I want to talk about a, a, a bit of a different part of it. And I think a lot of us feel like whether you're a coach or an, an entrepreneur or and an entrepreneur or you have a full time job, we a lot of us feel like we'll live in a bit of a bubble, like we really know what's going on with us in our job. And then we see people post their their wins and highlights on LinkedIn and social media. And we have no idea how they got there, what's going on there. And we also don't really know how we're doing. And for me, this experience was kind of seeing both, seeing what everyone else is doing, how they're getting there, really for everyone to share very openly and honestly what's going on and for me to also feel like yes i am also doing doing well uh for me that was a very big part of of this experience and feeling like okay now there is a community in my life that knows <laughs> what it is that i actually do because i feel like a lot of us know that unless it's someone who does the exact same job that you have they don't no one else in your life your family your loved ones don't really know what it is that you're going through again whether you're a coach or you're a full-time employee no one really knows and it's it makes such a huge difference having people in your life who get it having people in your life who you can message and ask questions <sighs> tell them i'm again <laughs> also getting getting emotional um tell them what you're going through tell them what challenges you have what wins you have and feeling like they really support you and celebrate you and they go out of their way to to help you so that was a big piece for me uh, of this experience and there's of course so 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 much more and i have this big notepad that I brought from this experience with tons of notes that I still have yet to go through and look back at because there is just so much. So I am very thankful that I was able to join this experience. Oh, thank you. You're right. No, it, most people say it's a conference or a summit. <laughs> if they're not from there, what a true mastermind really is there. So we got to debunk the myth here. <laughs> of what a mastermind really is. And really, I, I, we get this question a lot. I don't know if you, you get this, but I get like, what is really a mastermind? It's really an opportunity where we bring like-minded people together and share our collective wisdom and knowledge and collaborate with each other, challenge each other, and to, to really elevate each other. That's what mastermind is all about. It's not a traditional way of, of learning of a conference where you just get lectured, but you are actually learning from one another and get new ideas, new, new inspiration there. So uh, Maya, you want to... Add in yours as well, what made it memorable and transformative for you? 
Yeah, there were definitely a couple of things. I'm going to echo what was said about the community. I think it's hard to see from the outside how lonely entrepreneurship can be. Literally, you sit between four walls and do a lot of your work on your own and you have to figure it all out. You have to make big decisions. And I know for me, the first couple of years in my business, it did feel very lonely because I didn't have that community of people who know exactly what I do. And I love my family and my partner and everyone else, but when they're not in it with you, um, it's a little bit harder to, to really support. So having these incredible women who has gone through the same challenges, the same problems, the same, uh, you know, uh, challenges with self-belief and should I do this or should I do that? How am I going to grow my business? I think it was just so comforting and empowering to know I'm not alone and to know that at any given time, I can just text anyone and get the response that I need and get an abundance of support and knowledge. So I would say that was the second thing, accelerated knowledge. I think what I learned in five days probably have taken me, I don't know, five years, because you get to learn from everyone's successes, but also from everyone's mistakes. So I have a much clearer path for my business now. I know what works, what doesn't work. Um, and it just feels so much more, um, it just feels like I have a much clearer view of the future and what I need to do. And that's going to keep me going for a really, really long time. So yes, this has been a transformational experience. I like to say life changing because that's how I feel. I feel my life before the mastermind and my life after um, are just going to be completely different. Yeah, amazing. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. We said a comment from Johan here. He wrote that I've been part of a few masterminds, but this experience sounds fundamentally different and totally transformative for all you ladies. Great job, Diana. Thank you so much. And, and it really actually um, goes nicely to my the next question that I'm going to answer about, and we'll get all of the answers. Like, what made this experience special and unique compared to other type of events that you've attended? And perhaps I'm going to take a step back. The question that Tiffany had for me is like, what was my vision and how this whole planning process? So, tying back this topic of quantum leap growth, I've been in my own business for 12 years, and I've always been have this value for growth, excellence, human connection, authenticity. These are like my core values. And I've been, I've been investing in my own growth like year over year, every single year. And since the pandemic in 2020, um, you know, just through, through my walks, like with my husband, I, I felt lonely as well. Like I've been telling my husband, like I'm meeting a lot of people. I love all these people that I meet. And I was just feeling there was that disconnect there. And I remember telling him like, I need to form my own circle. I need to form, like find my own peeps and form my own circle. Like that's, that was the conversation I was having like, through these walks with him. I was like, I need to go form my own circle. And, 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 and so fast forward last year in 2022, I attended another transformational mastermind that hosted by one of my friends uh, in the Danette in Paris. And I love the experience. It was a combination of international travel, learning, shopping, uh, luxury, making friends. I'm like, oh my goodness, like this is what I want to do as well. Like back in 2019, when I did my first mastermind in Mexico, I knew I wanted to host my uh, my own one day. But because with the pandemic, like, you know, you know, it wasn't you know, a great idea to travel. But last year, you know, I, I just lingered feeling I just want to bring all these amazing people together. And when Tiffany came to visit me from Montreal last year, November, I basically shared with her my vision idea. Like the first step is having a vision. The second step here is like sharing it with others and see if anyone's excited about it. And remember her and I, we were at the spa. Like I took her to the spa. I was like, I got this big idea that I want to share with you. <laughs> and it's a combination that I fit um, of professional development where we're learning and growing from each other like-minded people. Second is I want to have personal wellness where we get to relax at a spa in a luxury uh, setting. And the third piece for me that was important is powerful conversations. I wanted people to really have the opportunity to really be in that immersive environment to really connect and build like lifelong friends there. So when I shared with her this vision, she was the first one was like, heck yes, I'm in. So literally within 24 hours, like following that following week, I created this. I was like, this is what I'm going to create. And I reached out to, to all of you, like many of you here. And within a week, I had five of you all signed up, said, yes, I'm in. And then like Anna, like a month and a half before, like I'm in as well. So I was just so excited. Like this is something I've been 
thinking about for a long time. And for me, I felt what made this different from other events is it's not just about the learning, which I know that is important, but I also want to uh, encompass the piece around personal wellness, which I know a lot of us talked about in terms of feeling burnt out, or maybe sometimes we were always working too much and we need to also take a step back. So my vision was that slowing down to speed up. So I called it like like, like a spa for your soul and your business for the, the, this, this mastermind there. And so I think that's what also really made it different. Um, and then just that spontaneity when we had, we had wine tasting night, <laughs> I think thanks to Kater, we were just talking like we, I surprised the later, like, let's do a wine tasting night. And that was one, like such a fun activity that I feel like, I think halfway through the event that we're like, this was just a great way to, 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 to bond with each other there. So, so that, that, that was that. I don't know if anyone want to add in like what you felt made this special or unique compared to other groups that you've been part of, but I felt it was a combination of everything that, it, that I would wanted to create there. Yeah, I can weigh in. Like, I, I do really feel that this was the perfect combination between getting an opportunity to, to really connect with people, to slow down a little bit, but also to learn. Like, had we not had those opportunities to go to the spa or to do our wine tasting or whatever it was, I think that it would have almost been too much because I was learning so much in our sessions. So I really thought that you struck the perfect balance I came home feeling like I really enjoyed that. I learned an incredible amount and like I formed some really important connections. So that that's to me what was so special about it. Yeah. 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 Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I also appreciate the, like the setting that you chose for it, Diana. So I know that was very intentional. And in addition to the actual like itinerary that you put together, which was, as Katie said, like this perfect balance of, business masterminding and taking care of ourselves and acknowledging the importance of self-care, which Diane is the queen at doing. <laughs> I'm sure we, we all see her show up for herself in that way. And she was really inspiring, encouraging us to do it. But I think just showing, you know, like what kind of inspiration can come from the environment that we're in, you know, that yeah. you don't have to be in a conference room without any windows. Like we were brainstorming on the beach. We were in the pool. We were outside with fresh air and sun and just really in a, a completely positive energy. And that was a big part of it for me as, as one of the attendees of being in that kind of very serene context and environment that I, I think personally allowed a lot of that creativity and exchange to flow so naturally for all of us. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. I have to tell one of the special moments for me, it was actually halfway through mid midway point when we were actually all sitting outside of the coffee shop there. And I remember seeing Anna across from me openly sharing, I think it was about launches like sales. And I was so in awe seeing her like teaching all of us of uh, her approach to how she does her, her her launches. And I was I was in awe. I had this moment, I couldn't even tell you guys, like I I was just this moment of frozen. I was like looking how everyone's like listening and I was like yeah like this is really good and, and I'm just I, I had a moment of very emotional because I'm like that's exactly what I wanted like I wanted people to be learning from each other it's not just me teaching that we're all learning and growing from each other and that's when I knew like this was really special that like you know this this is going to be amazing like the rest of the week there so I just want to share that 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 one of my highlights was just that midway through was just seeing that and seeing like back the closing night. I mean, my, my other highlights was my opening closing night and seeing how we all acknowledge each other. First night, we first time meeting each other, where we all talked about the qualities we see in each other. To me, that's such a powerful exercise. Like how often when you think about us growing that we really take the time, like where we actually get that feedback from other people of the qualities they see in us, right? Like that is just so empowering. And to end the night, the last night of the possibilities that I see in you after spending so much time together of what is possible, the future holds. Like to me, like just my, my heart just burst <laughs> um, to, to have that. And I never anticipated that. I knew that I wanted some sort of transformational exercise. I did imagine it would in, unfold it so beautifully there. Yeah. Yeah. So what I can add story, is Diana, I just want to add one one um, thing here. I also think this environment is what helped us to actually build like very strong personal connections, because initially before before we went there, and I looked at the schedule and I realized, oh, there are no 
conference rooms. Like there's no set stage there. And I thought, well, how is that going to work? And I'm actually very glad that it was structured in a way it was structured because I just don't think you can build as strong of a connection on a personal level with someone that quickly if you're just sitting next to each other in a boardroom versus really having a casual conversation by the pool. And I think that would, what really allowed us to walk away from it feeling like, okay, I made lifelong friends. So I am really thankful, Diana, that that's the way you envision it. That's the way you structured it. And that's how I feel all of us walked away feeling. So just wanted to I appreciate that. that because I'm going to be honest with all you ladies. My biggest concern, because I've never actually been to this resort, was actually the space. So I arrived two days early with Tiffany to really just get an idea of the space to make sure that we would have some private space. And I'm so glad we all got upgraded to VIP, <laughs> where we had VIP lounge access and VIP. And that was my bigger concern, actually, was that from a spacing, whether we'll be able to have that environment to also have the privacy for us to learn and grow. So, so thank you for trusting that process as well. Like part of me was also like I needed to trust that the space would be there. And, and it did uh, unfold it like beautifully there. So, so thank you for that. And I think what I wanted to add is um, I truly appreciated the um, selection that you had. Um, pretty diverse women out there, right? Everyone does a similar thing, but they have a different mindset. And and um, and I know we talked about it with Katie. I mean, you're a white person in there, but we're talking about gender gap. If you feel it as a woman, as an executive, and you're writing about that post, I didn't have really a gut to actually call it out, saying that, you know, there's a white privilege, you know? But then I'm thinking, wow, like, you know, she feels it. Can you imagine the people of color like me feeling it too? And actually having that very honest conversation was so powerful for me that I didn't think I would be going out there and networking event and calling this out. And then I think from that point of view, you guys gave me that title, which is like, I think you, I see you as a change maker and advocate that just stuck to my head. I was like, okay, so I'm not a troublemaker. I'm that, right? So I think seeing what's possible and what we value in each other was transformation for me. Amazing, amazing. So let's dive in. Like I know for those who are joining right now, like welcome to the show on how to quantum leap your growth. We're going to talk about next is um, around what are the key factors that you consider when it comes to investing your growth? What do you consider? What do you look for? Yeah, I can share a little bit. Um, so I think I, it actually took me a really long time to make the decision to invest in myself. I wish I could say I did it my entire career, but it actually came pretty late. But when I did it, when I first invested in myself, when I went to a personal development workshop, it was like $1,000. I thought it was the most expensive thing in the world, and it drove me crazy. But after taking that workshop, I made a leap in my career that I waited three years to do. And I could do it like that just a couple of weeks later. So when it comes to making that investment, what I look for first and foremost is for someone that I can actually trust and believe in, meaning I want to see that they did exactly what I'm trying to do, right? I don't want to learn from a textbook. I can go and Google it. I want someone who has been through the experience, who knows the difficulties, who have been through all the different hurdles and can really help me avoid the pitfalls, but also give me the tools for success? How do I actually, you know, make my dreams a reality? So I think first and foremost for me is who is actually the person uh, teaching and showing me the way. And then I think, uh, what is the problem that I'm trying to solve? And do I believe that this specific solution would actually allow me to solve it? So I'm not looking for nice to have, I'm looking for actual solutions that I think will help me cross the chasm, solve the problem, or gain the confidence that I need. I think those are the two main things that I usually look for. Amazing. Amazing. 
Yeah, I want to layer on to that because that was so good, Maya. Um, for me, whenever I'm thinking about investing in myself, which I do quite often, I like it. My bank account doesn't always like it, but <laughs> I think it's really important to do it. And what I always like to ask myself first and foremost is what do I feel like I'm missing? Where's the gap in my knowledge? And as Maya mentioned, who's the best person to fill that gap? And oftentimes I'm not a hundred percent sure who's the best, you know, coach to help and support me in my business. So I really rely on community. I really rely on leaning on other people to sort of help and guide me. And that was one of the things that we talked about as well in the mastermind was what are some of the other business related programs that you've been in? What teachings and learnings did you learn from them? And almost kind of supporting each other around even our next level of investment that we want to make in ourselves based off of what we feel we might be missing in terms of our business and business growth. So I think it's important to know what do you feel like you're missing? Where's the gap in knowledge? And lean on people in your community to help you kind of get guided to the individuals who can really support you in obtaining that knowledge so you can fill that gap the best way possible. Hmm. Yeah, I love that. Uh, for me too, it's kind of similar to Maya where I, I started investing in my, my own professional development a little bit later as well. And I talk about this a lot, even in my coaching that, you know, we, we so easily invest in schooling right? And I have nothing against that. But there's a lot that school doesn't teach us whether to succeed in the corporate space, but even especially as an entrepreneur. Um, and so for me, when I'm considering what to invest in, um, I started this essentially when I started my business, I was like, I need to invest in something that's going to help me like fast track my success with this. I, the type that will put in the work, I'm highly committed and very self-disciplined. So if I can have someone who's walk that walk, who can help me fill in the gaps and remove that guesswork for me, I'm all in. Um, and that was what started the journey for me a, a few years ago where I was like, okay, this is good. Like the traction I'm building in filling in those gaps made it all worth it. And I think what's been a continued driver for me moving forward in how I invest in myself, what I choose to invest in. And it's similar to Jasmine, it's definitely on like my opportunity areas. I think during our mastermind together, we, we saw like, all the different possibilities that there's not one way to run a business and a, you know, a service-based business and there's no one size fits all model. So I think it's really important for me to always stay true to what do I really enjoy? Where do I thrive? What's most natural for me? Um, and how I can further accelerate on that and find the right support system or coach or program that's going to really elevate me in that way. And so that's a big part of my consideration process of both the person um, or business that I'm choosing to partner with to help me in that, but also how much it aligns with me and the path that I'm, I'm creating specifically for myself and my clients. I love that. I love that. The key thing you're pointing out here is alignment. Is it aligning to what you want more of and or where you where you want to go there? I want to ask the audience as well, like, what do you consider when it comes to, to, to investing in there? So Anna... Um, I think my journey is actually similar to both uh, Tiffany's and Maya's because I don't even think I knew what it meant to invest in yourself outside of school, outside of investing in an advanced degree and going back and getting a business degree. I thought that was kind of it. And Tiffany, I loved what you said that we're we see investing in yourself as going to school. And then I think as we get a little bit older and we have families where we invest in our kids, but then we forget to invest intentionally in ourselves and that the same way school helps you to, to get to where you want to get to get to, there are other ways you can invest in yourself. And that's something that you can continue and should continue to do really for the rest of your career. And similar to Maya, um, a few years ago, I came across when I was just starting my business, I came across a program. It was also $1,000. And I also thought it was the craziest thing ever. And I was terrified to invest. And once I did, like that was that was it. that day, I think really everything changed for me because I realized oh, that's how I do it. That's how I get to my goals in the fastest, easiest way possible. That's how I make sure that I avoid the mistakes along the way. 
that I would inevitably make trying to figure it out on my own. So since then, I and I share this on my kind of social media all the time that last year I've invested more in myself than the cost of my business degree. This year, we're only May and we have already matched that with the investment in myself. And I've also shared that last year, my business grew 13 times in 12 months. And I really attribute that to investing in myself. And the way I always look at it, similar to some of you ladies here, the way I always look at it is where is my challenge? What am I missing here? What am I not understanding here? Okay, how do I figure that out in the fastest way possible? Who is the expert in that? Can I talk to someone? Is there a product out there that will help me with this piece that I'm struggling with? And the alignment piece is also big for me as well. I always look for, like, does this feel right? Does this, this person, the way they show up, um, the way they, they talk, their messaging, does it resonate with me? Does it sit well with me? Because I always think about it from the perspective of it's not just what you learn, but it who it's also who teaches that to you because you need to hear it from the right person for it to really sit right with you and resonate with you. So those are the two main pieces. Um, so I'm I'm obsessed with always really looking at what am I missing? What do I not know right now? And how do I figure that out in the fastest and easiest way possible with someone who already knows how to do that? So I'm kind of obsessed with that. And I think people who are in my life, my loved ones, think I'm a little bit crazy because I'm always I'm like, oh, I found this program. I found this. I found this person who's going to help me with this one thing. And they think I'm a little bit crazy. But I think once you try it and once you're in it, there is just no going back because you just see how fast you're you're progressing. You're hooked afterwards. Absolutely. <laughs> After investing yourself. Oh my goodness. Amazing. Katie and um, Sweater, if you can maybe also add on to this question is how has uh, investing yourself um, helped you grow in your career or business? Yeah, that's a great question. And And similarly to the ladies here, although I think I've actually been even worse than all of you at investing in myself until pretty recently. Um, so the first time I had invested in myself, at one point I did get a coach while I was in my corporate career. And that was my company investing in me, but I convinced them to do it. Um, and the impact of that was it allowed me to see I wasn't in the right place. So huge impact, right? And then land my first VP role. So big impact there. And for some reason, I didn't learn. And so then I stopped investing in myself. And then only last year, in the first year of my business, I, I did my first investment. I hired um, a coach. And I, saw immediately, I immediately saw impact. There was so much low-hanging fruit in terms of things that I could learn and ways I could grow my business. And so I was, I was absolutely convinced. And that's partly what helped me decide to join this mastermind because I had seen such impact even from that small engagement that I thought, look at the women who are gonna join this. I am convinced that I have a massive amount to learn from them. So we're, I think we're all so in line. I, I hate to just like echo everything you guys said, but I, I completely agree. Like for me, when I'm looking at who am I going to invest my hard earned money with, and my time, which is also precious, I look at people who have done what I want to do, right? I look at their, I look at their profile. I look at their success. I look at whether they're living a life that I kind of want to live, right? So if they've been successful, but they're a workaholic and have no work-life balance, that's actually not, that's not my jam. That's not the person yeah. I want to go learn from because that's not the life I want. So both I look at where, what has their success trajectory looked like, where are they now, but also what do they preach and how aligned are we? Yeah, amazing. Sweta? 
So when I try to invest in myself and for, my, for my business, I definitely look at the, um, what is it? What is the ROI, return on investment? Can I use that for myself and business? And can I transfer that to my clients? What's an impact? Am I learning something new? And who is teaching me matters as well. And that's why I decided to invest in your program as well, because I feel like, okay, these are all coaches that are doing exactly the same thing. And I feel like there are certain part of business I'm lacking the knowledge on it. If I want to scale it, I really want to learn from them because that's the directions that I want to move on. And whether it be certifications, whether it be taking courses or something, I've always looked at, can I get the confidence from this? And can my client learn from this? And that's been, ex- that, that's been fabulous. At the transformation, we as a coach as well, we see it is when you learn something, you feel confident to pass it on to your clients and your client feels that they get value out of it. And that's really important for me when I try to invest it. Amazing. Amazing here. So I'm going to go through some crap up fry questions here before I know some of you have to go. Not everyone has to answer all these questions here. A question that ties in the growth is how do you maintain and nurture the connections you've made through events like like this or other professional development you've done. Uh, Maya, why don't you go first there? Yeah, so honestly, and I think this is actually part of the reason that we were able to create such great friendships is that we didn't just start with the mastermind. We connected earlier. We have a group where we talk to one another, where we chat daily. Um, I think um, you uh, coming in every Friday and asking us, hey, what are your wins? Let's share, let's celebrate one another. I think having that cadence and also having that vulnerability um, to share it with one another, I think this is what's going to keep this relationship going. So it's not a one and done. It's not just the event. We actually build a community. And I have no doubt that we're going to continue having this community. And I think I told you this during uh, the mastermind, you can close the group because we know where you live and we'll find you. (laughs) Um, (laughs) It's just so valuable to have that ability to constantly chat to one another. And we do it in the group setting, but we also do it one-on-one if we need a specific, you know, kind of help from one another. So I think it's really just about having that container but also having the openness and vulnerability to keep on sharing and asking and learning from one another, even after the mastermind. Yeah. I love that. What you just said there. Um, Don't shut the group. (laughs) Jasmine. (laughs) No, you can't, you cannot shut the group. And yeah, I I just want to layer onto what Maya said that I think there, there is no way to not stay connected because Mm -hmm we have the chat that you created and we're still talking on the chat every single day. We're still reaching out to each other. And now that we know each other, I mean, it's just a completely different relationship. Now that we've seen each other in real life, we are so invested in each other's growth and in each other's businesses that there's no way this couldn't just organically keep going. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. Katie, anything you want to add? Because I know a few of you have to get going here. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. I I am going to jump off in a minute, but um, I I echo that. I think it's important to also just carve out time for that if we think it's important, because it's so easy to get wrapped up in our business, in our lives, in our day-to-day. And this is the really important stuff. So we carved out the time to go meet in Cancun, but now it's like, okay, should we be carving out an hour or two every month or every quarter and actually getting that on the calendar. I love the daily chat, but I'm also a fan of the deeper conversations. So I think it's up to us to prioritize that, to make sure that it happens. And I mean, I told you, I think on like day one or day two, that I'm ready to start planning next year's. (laughs) So I'll be carving out time for that. Amazing. (laughs) Quarterly planning meetings here. Amazing. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you. I know Jasmine, Maya, Katie, you need to hop off. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate you. Really, really appreciate it. And I'm going to wrap up with a few more questions for for those who can stay. We'll love to ask a couple more questions. I'm going to share a few more things as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much there. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is so good. So for those who are here, I want to talk a little bit. One of the questions I always get is how do you go about actually finding the right people 
to connect with? Like, how do you really go about networking? Like, I know some of you, like, a lot of you actually, I'll throw three of you here, love networking here is how do I go about finding the right people to, to learn and grow with? Yeah. I could go uh, as a starting point. Um, I think it, it varies a little bit, you know, if it's people that I'm looking to hire um, if it's something I'm investing in versus people I genuinely want to build deeper connections with. Um, I'm a very empathic driven person. Um, and so that really fuels me in my day to day, my coaching. It fuels me a lot in my corporate work. And so I, I really empathize with people and what they go through. And that helps me really determine the type of people I want to further network with. Um, it's not necessarily all people in the coach, career coaching space, um, but people that I feel really inspired by or see a lot of potential in or have an admiration for what they do in their own craft. Um, that's a big driving pull for me. I think when it's people that I choose to invest in, I, I'm i not necessarily someone who, you know, invest immediately in someone. I like to get a chance to see their style, their philosophy, um, how they walk the walk, because I'm a big believer in, you know, walking the walk for my own clients and making sure that they feel really comfortable and relatable and, and very well taken care of with me. So I kind of look for that in the people that I'm seeking out as possible uh, coaches or supporters for me in my business. Um, so it, it's actually very like emotionally driven process for me, Diana. Um, it's not just like looking on paper on someone's stats or metrics. I like to go a lot deeper than that and make sure that there's an actual like emotional connection that's pulling us together. And that's typically mm -hmm. when I go, okay, let's, let's make it happen. And I'm very proactive. So I'm not afraid to reach out to someone, send them a voice note. I think you guys know I'm very big on voice notes. Um, I think there's something really beautiful of hearing someone hear your voice and the, the genuine curiosity that you have and getting to know them. Um, so yeah, I'm never afraid to make the first move. So <laughs> that's something I, I kind of live by also in my, my networking strategies. Make the first move. And I love your voice notes, Tiffany. You really got me into voice notes because of you. So I, so I want to thank you for, for that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I just want to echo the making the first move. I teach and preach uh, networking and building a community and finding the right people and and building those relationships in your life and in your career. I'm big on that. I talk about that, I think, on social media pretty much every single day. So to me, it really all comes down to making the first move and being vulnerable and saying that this is what I really admire about you or really like about what you do or what you have done. And that's where I always start. And Similar to, to Tiffany, I always look for the right energy. Does this, does this seem right? Does this resonate with me? Does, their, does the way they show up, does the way they talk, does their messaging resonate with me? So that's what I always look for. And it doesn't have to be just within the space that we are in. It can be any other industry, but it's always, is it something that, is it someone that I can, I can connect with and learn from? And is, is it something, is it someone who I can also give, give back to? And is, is it someone who can also learn from me? Um, so that's, that's what I usually look for. Yeah. That's amazing to hear that. What about you, Sweta? I think lately, I don't know if you feel it too, but in a corporate world, I wanted to be the smartest one in the room. Right. And I think that just totally completely flipped now being an entrepreneur and coach and career strategist, I want to be not the smartest people in the room and I want to get out because truly I want to learn something from me so I could literally just say, but oh, that felt good. I learned so much, right? I don't mind giving back, you know, teaching them. But I think it's probably because I'm 42, over 40 as well. The mindset has been completely shifted. And I feel that I do not want to be the smartest woman in the room. And I want to be surrounding myself with a diverse women, right? And I think I do believe on like, you know, DEI um, items, which is I want to walk the talk. I want to partner with the people who have a similar mindset, who value people like me, who would give me the, I mean, don't hire people like us just 
as a coda, but then when you put me on a table, give me a voice as well, right? So I think that's what I believe in. I like to surround myself with the typical uh, mindset like that, where I know that when I actually speak up or something, there are going to be like, and she's got the point instead of like rolling eyes, right? And I've been truly, you know, um, I think that was the reason for me to join the mastermind as well, because I felt that in each of you. And I felt that with Diana as well. So it was a motivation for me to say, I think I'd be really happy to hang around with these kind of women who are, I can learn and I'm not the smartest person in the room. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Honestly, truthfully for me, it, there needs to be that emotional connection. Because even when I think about forming this whole event, it's like, who are the people I want to spend five days with? that I'm going to have a great time, I'm going to learn from, and just really want to stay connected with as well. So there needs to be that connection of alignment of, of value. So to wrap things up, like, what's like one piece of advice for those who are considering investing themselves, but are hesitant? What's that one piece of advice that you have for someone who's looking to want to start investing themselves there? I think a big I'll, question. I'll, that... I'll go first. I have... Okay, yeah, go oh. ahead, Anna. You have to hop off. I'll go after you. Go ahead. Yeah, I need to hop off. So, um, what I always say is do it scared, <laughs> do it anxious, because it's normal to feel that way when you are investing in yourself, especially for the first time. And it's possible that that will still come up for you when you invest in yourself for the second time and third time. It still comes up for me, even though I know the ROI that I get out of it, but I still have that feeling come up for me. So do it scared, <laughs> do it anxious. But look at your goal, like look at why you're doing that. Look at your why and don't let those, those fears that will potentially come up <laughs> as you are about to, to make the investment, don't let them stand in your way. Amazing. Thank you so much, sure. Anna. Thank you so much. I'm and I'm going to see you later on. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Yeah, I love that. I was going to add a, a few additional points. I, I think a big part of it is also being, you know, self-aware and objective with yourself. I mean, a question I like to ask myself, I like to ask my clients, my community members is, you know, do you, do you honestly have like the right support system to get you to where you want to go on your own? You know, and sometimes we lie to ourselves and be like, I, th I think I do, or maybe I do. But the, the quote that I love that I, I come back to a lot is, you know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. You know, if you wanted to hit a goal and you haven't gotten there on your own and you are struggling to get there and it's difficult and frustrating and you're honestly losing precious time that you can never get back, right? For me, I'm, I'm, a big on time. I've totally changed my perspective around time this past year um, in not rushing, but also being very cognizant of how I use my time and where I can be more efficient in my time. And for me, that's a big part of investing is gaining back time, right? Imagine if you can invest in something that not only helps you get to your goals faster, but gives you time back in your life for other things. You know, yeah. I talk about this a lot of, you know, what, what are we sometimes putting off or not doing in our life because we feel like we don't have the time when in reality, we're just not going about it the right way, or we don't have the right strategies to help us have it all. And I love yeah. helping people realize that they can have it all and, and absolutely yeah. live that life for themselves. And so if anyone is considering investing in themselves, think of that, you know, ask yourself if you really have the support system to get you to where you need to go faster. Um, if you haven't been getting there and you're feeling time is slipping through your fingertips, yeah. maybe that's that self-awareness wake up call of something needs to change. Yeah. Yeah. That's such fantastic advice. I love that. Sweta, anything you want to add? And I think the end goal matters. Why are you investing yourself? And the ROI does definitely matter as well. So when I'm investing in myself, obviously, trying to think of it, is it the bragging? Can I go on to the social media and say, hey, I have a certificate, right? I'm certified now versus I've learned so much now I can make an impact in a day-to-day -day life. And I think investment is something that it's a personal need. And if you want confidence, if you want to learn from somebody, um, you got to make sure that, you know, um, you look up to them too. Sometimes you got to feel it. And I've, I've done the investment in myself where I didn't feel that, okay, well, I learned something from the person itself. So I've self-reflected. I became self-aware. Is it me not trying to learn or is it the person not teaching me the way I want to learn? So 
every learning is different for everybody and you got to figure out how do you learn? Is it online? Is it being in the person networking? I think I learned from where I was like the mastermind. It was best for me because I, I, that's how I learn. I get to s- have that sense of feeling. I get to feel the emotions, right? So I think you just have to define who are you as a person, be self aware, and what didn't work for you now, what are you going to do differently? And that's, that's the investment that everyone has to go through it. Um, someone's trying to give you like 15 years of lesson in two hours and it's going to be empowerment. It's going to be so powerful. Learn from somebody who's already done something and where you want to go and see them as a mentor for a lifetime. And that's my strategy. It's been um, as an entrepreneur, as a coach, as someone who's led the team as well in the past. Yeah, that's amazing. I love this conversation, especially around growth. Like one thing I want to add, because I started investing myself at least 15 years ago after I did my MBA. And my first big investment was actually like a 10K investment and more because it required me to travel multiple times of the year. And I remember my husband calculated the cost that it cost me like over $100,000 for all these trainings. And what I've learned, like for those who are looking to really start on this professional development journey is find someone who is your buddy, who is also like growth oriented and wants to continue to grow because it's going to get lonely. You may find people in your own circle that yes, they may be your friends. Yes. They like to learn, but they may might not have that mindset of want to really invest in themselves, right? Really going away. Like I invested in like the Tony Robbins training, walking on fire or this warrior camp that required me to be away for a week. And so it's so important to find your own peeps, the people that you really want to pair up with, to, to grow with and to surround yourself with those people and know that it's okay. Like as you continue to grow, you're going to form your own new circle as well, right? This is what I've realized. Like I, I have amazing friends, a lot of great network as well, but as I continue to grow as an entrepreneur, I know that I need to surround myself with other fellow entrepreneurs who understand the business that I in, in order to continue to, to elevate there. So this is why I'm so proud of this mastermind. Like I feel like this is my next level legacy work, right? I've been doing coaching for the 10 plus years, one-on-one, very impactful. I love it and speaking, but there's something special when it comes to being also in an in-person event where it's a very immersive learning experience that really quantum leaps the growth, right? When we talk about this topic, quantum leaping your growth, it's very different from having a conversation line versus like spending five days uh, together, right? Like imagine if we had five days of virtual learning versus being in an immersive environment in a very beautiful setting, the, the experience is different there. And so this is where we want to assess like what type of kind of environment you want to be in to help you with, uh, with, with growing there. So, so yeah, so I, this was a great conversation. I, I just really love that we're able to bring our learnings in from the mastermind and talk about growth, because when we think about what we do as coaches, we really talk a lot about if you want to accelerate your career or if you want to get more opportunities, you got to invest in yourself, right? Whether it's improving, dubbing down your skills, your brand, your confidence, your mindset, all of that plays in a role in helping you grow there. Yeah. Right. If I could add a last point, you just made me think of Diana, you know, Anna mentioned it earlier, right? Like do it scared, do it anxious. You know, I, I know firsthand, like that it can feel really scary that first time that you invest in yourself in a way that's not school. But what's often scarier is being in the exact same spot you're in right now, like months or years down the line and coming to regret it or resent yourself for it or looking back and being like, my gosh, why didn't I make a change sooner? I never want anyone to operate from a place of that kind of mindset. So as much as it might be scary to make that first step and make that first leap, think about how scary it is to not do that for yourself and the type of repercussions that might have down the line that you, you, you can't always take back. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Well, thank you so much. I want to ask the audience you're here, let us know what your key takeaways are. This was such a beautiful conversation. Um, I really love it. I just want to tell you ladies how much I adore you. I love you, respect you, and so grateful for you as well. Like I, you are my favorite group right now to be part of. (laughs) You'll always be. First batch is always. Or your tribe. Or your tribe, <laughs> Diana. And thank you for bringing us together in this way. Because like like I said, even, you know, in a quick video I, I filmed with you before we, we departed in, in Mexico, you know, you really have this uncanny ability to see the possibilities in, in others when they don't always see it in themselves. And I think that was a big pull for you in, in choosing the right people to bring yeah. together who not only would grow and up-level together, 
but really, really see possibilities for one another that they might not have seen for themselves prior to joining your master, Mike. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. That's so beautiful. That is amazing. So beautiful. I think it was a right set. I think it was a right set of women. And then we knew each other from LinkedIn, but we did not know. But the, the fact that they were exactly the same online, the branding perspective, when you meet down and it's like, oh, it's the same person. I can't believe that I just met them today. That was the true, I think, branding that we all felt it. And it was amazing. The power yeah. of women coming together again, not to compete, to collaborate was mind blowing that I've never seen it anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. And for those who just tuned in, you can catch the replay, you know, go to my YouTube channel, Diana YK Chan to catch a replay. Make sure to follow all the coaches. I'll see all the links on my YouTube channel uh, as well. Um, yes, I see someone who's just joining in here. I'm going to wrap up with a, a closing video of our event of our night when we had our wine tasting. Ooh, <laughs> of how much yeah. fun we had. Like that was the fun part after we really learned for 20 plus hours of masterminding. We're like, let's loosen up and have some fun. So I'm going to wrap that up there. And for those, you know, who are still here, if you want to get in touch with any of us, feel free to just DM us, message us on our, our Instagram or LinkedIn or follow, and follow us there. Okay. Amazing. So let me just play that and we're going to wrap up here. Thank you so much, ladies. I love you. Thank you, Thank you Diana. Thank you, thank you. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Thank you. Okay. Let me play this video here. one nope I had another one it's this one sorry this is the one I want to share let's see if it works oh there it is hey, I found